It's 1 a.m. These papers are blank. This microphone is fake. This is full of vinegar. Yeah. Let's record. Oh, we're live? And being edited at the same time? Camera one? Hey! <laughs> Welcome to AKC News. At home. Today, we're talking about energy and its use in two particular countries. The first country is Portugal. Now, Portugal has been basing their energy off of RES his or renewable energy sources, with power coming from wind, solar, hydro, geothermal, biomass, ocean, you name it. The production and advancements on Portugal is said to continue until 2030 will, where officials think they'll peak. A hidden reason why Portugal aims for better sources of energy is to increase their tourism rate to further boost their economy. They have been on a slow decline ever since a global recession years ago. They were bailed out by the European Union almost a decade ago and have been since reporting large amounts of tourism and improved real estate due to their effective energy. Portugal is increasing their renewable energy consumption by graduating away from fossil fuels and petrol. The availability is limited due to few resources in Portugal. They must rely on neighboring countries to supply other energy. Isn't that right? Portugal today is around 60% renewable, which is very high. Portugal has ambitious goals in the future, by 2030, to be 80% renewable and completely eliminate petrol use. The actions they plan to become 80% renewable is to increase their solar and wind energy absorption. Now, the EU has a goal for all its contributors to reach at least 30% renewable. And, you know, 80 is more than 30 I think, yeah, I think that checks out. So with the hope of using renewable energy, the government thinks that more wealth and jobs will be created, boosting Portugal as a whole. Now, the impact of Portugal is minuscule compared to others. Of course, not as minuscule as my grade is to becoming an A in math. I'm looking at you, Miss Howe. Portugal is considered a world leader in the era of renewable energy. So their impacts are already sustainably beneficial and will continue to prevail. And now, to sound, as I'm being told, fancy and professional, here are some graphs telling you that I'm right. Ooh, wow, look at that graph. Depicting a lot of import sources. Ooh, I like that graph. That states that Portugal is the fifth in the generation of renewable en energy. Ooh, a downward trend? Wow, that's... Energy consumption is going down. Good for them. And these windmills. Wow, how, how beautiful. The dramatic change in percentage of sustainable energy use is a hopeful stretch. With enough mines and a dash of luck, Portugal might be shaping the future for our generation. With ideas about... With ideas around creating viable alternatives, Portugal is looking to have a flashing future. Way back in the 1950s, there was a push for Portugal to build large dams, and that just didn't quite happen. So an improvement Portugal could do, is, since they're right next to the ocean, is to build a large dam, or multiple dams, to increase their ocean efficiency. Mmm, vinegar. The second improvement would be to make a slow move towards self-preservation. Portugal is very reliant on other countries and if one of those countries implodes or something possible, then they would be left in the dust. To mitigate this chance, Portugal could move to a more local power supplies, such as wind, solar, etc. Another optimization is to use solar power. They're in a very optimal place for lots of solar radiation, and to capture the sun's energy and make it renewable would be very beneficial. It's proven to work, so why not use the technology? Portugal is blessed to be surrounded by rich areas and be positioned in an area with so much raw natural power. This has allowed them much wiggle room and a lot of room for error. Thankfully, Portugal is using their gifts as a demonstration and leading others into a truer path. Their choices and actions are intertwined with many others. Being a part of the EU has provided opportunities for Portugal to be included with big name countries. Now, it's time for Portugal to flex their knowledge and show others how to properly provide for the future. Now, not everything is hunky-dory in the energy department. Let's take a look at Yemen and see their troubles. Near opposite of Portugal, Yemen has the base main source of energy of petroleum and natural gas. 
with very low protection and high crime rates, Yemen has been put into a state of purgatory, and they are trying to move away from the toxic energy production, and, but they're struggling to get out of that slump they've created. Just around half of the 28.5 million residents in Yemen actually have access to electricity. The energy they do create is mostly unrenewable resources, with the main being petroleum. Now, petroleum is a limited and increasingly scarce resource. The more you burn through, <laughs> double meaning. The worse you'll end up for later down the road. Unless they start moving away from the ideology, big trouble will come their way. Thankfully, it looks like Yemen is turning towards solar production. They get around 300 days of solar radiation. With help from countries like France and the US, they can set up solar panels to start creating renewable energy. Now, without the luxury of electricity that many of us enjoy, you can become accustomed to living without it. Think for a second about if you had no electricity. Well, you wouldn't be listening to this video, but it's hard to imagine, right? But that's what some folks have to live through. And oddly enough, they don't worry about it too much because it's not an idea, it's not a thought in their head. Of course, heating and cooling and having a refrigerator really helps the survival, but in the matter of phones, laptops, never a thought is given. But without electricity, there comes negatives. There's less comfort, less food, hospitals and schools are run down, and people still suffer like this in 2020. Hopefully, with the implementation of creating renewable energy sources, uncomfortable situations will dwindle. Officials in Yemen hope to make renewable energy from 15% to 20% in just five years. And that seems like only 5%, but that's a tall order. The continued use of petroleum and fossil fuels will lead down a destructive spiral for any country. If you become so dependent on a single source of energy, you'll have to put all your eggs in a basket. And, well, putting all of your eggs in one basket is really bad. <laughs> Yep, I did that. And just like the egg is drying up my hair, so will the non-renewable sources dry up. Ooh, time for more graphs. This graph talks about in 2013 that Yemen spiked in energy consumption and production, creating a shaky foundation, which ultimately collapsed. They went slash are going through a recession now. Ooh, this graph shows the oil usage. And Yemen is currently in a war. With this picture, you can see a raging war happening will spare no resources and all the efforts are going to go towards the war and not really thinking about proper energy usage with yemen dwindling at a steady pace due to a war torn area the idea of energy is hardly on anyone's mind when situations turn into life and death energy is an afterthought really a never thought the war will change the land by making it ravage the reconstruction will take many resources and energy usage will have to spike once the war is over to rebuild. The main optimization strategy is an easy phrase to say, but very complicated to actually do. The war needs to stop. Once the war is over, Yemen can start a healing phase and start rebuilding. But we can't look at just the negatives. In the meantime, parties can brainstorm ways to make energy more reasonable. I suggest solar panels. They can be put up with the help of others, like USA and France, and provide renewable energy while not being right in the way. Another improvement that could be made is to utilize the neighboring country's supplies and resources. By gaining the help and aid of others, you can simultaneously build relations with them and help and sustain yourself. This would be very useful for future generations and their sustainability. Yemen is in a rough situation. Compared to an MEDC like Portugal, Yemen looks like a disaster which it literally is in. Once the war can end, others can start alleviating the pain and reconstruct. By implementing more solar panels when getting the goal of 20% renewable resources, it may be achievable. It looks dire right now, and it is, but with a few strings pulled, Yemen can start healing. Well, I hope you learned a little bit about Yemen and Portugal and their energy use. And I also hope I made you laugh, or at least gasp and be like, <laughs> Aaron, you silly goof. I'm gonna clean off now, this is terrible. Um. Yeah, thanks, bye.